Today on Go, we're making you think before you swipe. Welcome to the show. We're down here at Rose Cafe with Doug Spatowski of the Edmonton Financial Literacy Society. And Doug, what are we talking about today? We are talking about credit and credit cards. There we go. So lots of great information, including we want you to start asking yourselves this. Do I really need this next time you make a purchase? But to start the show, Sheryl Tosaskiw demonstrates just how difficult it is for some Edmontonians to get around. Thanks, Sheralta. Okay, once again, we are down here with Doug Spatowski, and we're talking all about credit, credit cards, interest. Christmas is just around the corner, and a lot of us, me included, get into a lot of trouble this time of year with our credit cards. But you have a little uh, a little helper in your wallet to make sure you're not overspending. Tell us about that. Well, I keep a little cover over my credit card that reminds me, do I really need this? Do I really need to spend this money? When it comes to clothes, I always really need to spend the money. That is my biggest downfall, especially being a woman. You like to be put together. You like to dress nice and present yourself well. I can't ever get enough clothes, so clothes for me is my biggest vice. But this time of year, like I was saying, presents. It's hard not to stop buying presents for people. You kind of get caught up in the, the festivities and the Christmas feeling. But how do you decide where to spend money when it comes to this time of year, the holiday season? Well, I think you need to really reflect on what I need to spend. Is there another way to do it? Can I make a Christmas present rather than going out and buying it? Are you a crafty guy? Mm, a little bit. I'm not. <laughs> You know, like I might glue some popcorn to a card and then maybe drizzle some ch chocolate sauce or something on it. My idea of crafts usually goes hand in hand with food and I'm not much of a baker. So that wouldn't necessarily be the route for me. Uh, but you had some, some stats when it comes to credit card debt. If someone has $4,000 of debt on their credit card and they're paying a certain way, tell us a little bit about how long it could take them and what the interest is going to be. A figure that was quoted the other night was that if you owe $4,000 on your credit card and you make the minimum payment of $121 a month, it will take you 25 years to pay and you will pay $12,500 in interest. That is insane. It I can't even insane. imagine. <laughs> you probably, after the however many years, won't even remember where that money went. 25 years is, geez, that's a quarter of a century. Okay, so we're going to have some interesting information and stats today on credit cards, interest, and the whole shebang. We'll be right back here on Go Edmonton. And we're back down here at Rose Cafe with Doug Spatowski of the Edmonton Financial Literacy Society. And we're talking all about credit cards. A big pain in the butt if you don't manage your money properly. You can get yourself into some serious trouble. But when you really need those credit cards is for those credit ratings, the big ticket items such as a house, a car. And Doug, how exactly do we make sure that our credit scores, our credit ratings are high enough to buy these things? The most important things are to borrow only the money you need. And if you're charging it to a credit card, pay that credit card off fully, consistently at the end of the month. Okay. Uh, my credit score, if I may share, is not too bad. I've got a, a high credit score oh, that is only because my father always taught me to never buy what you can't afford and to always pay your credit card bills in full whenever you buy something. So usually I'll, I'll go to the store, I'll buy $100 worth of groceries. I will, on my smartphone on the way home, put $100 onto my credit card. And I've always been like that. But Fantastic. most people aren't, uh, they, they haven't trained themselves to, to be that way with their money. That's very, very true. We need to get into the habit of paying our credit cards off fully at the end of the month. Yes, very nice. Okay, so we're going to have more information about that. But right now it's over to the Mayfield Dinner Theater with Tim Dancy. Thanks, Tim. Up next, we learn about a new route that local author Marty Chan is taking in the literary world. Remember to tweet us at go underscore EDM to win. Okay, so Doug, our next topic, just segueing from the credit card scores, ratings, uh, to use your credit card appropriately and to be more responsible with it, what do you suggest people do? Well, actually, now and then, we should use some cash. Okay, and why is that? We should use some cash because when we use cash, we have a feeling of loss when we actually take that money out of our wallet mm -hmm. and we don't have that feeling when we use our credit card okay yes when I use when I swipe my credit card punch in my code I'm feeling good about things I'm trying to keep track of it in my head not to go overboard but I actually never take out cash because I I do have that feeling of loss I feel like I spend it more quickly though at the same time however that's counterintuitive well if you were using cash then it'll help keep you under budget a whole lot better okay so when we're talking about using cash do you suggest maybe uh, couple hundred bucks at a time you use that for your groceries your everyday expenses maybe gas for your car or should we be taking more than that or less no why don't we try it out just one day a week 
Okay, one, just use cash one, one day, day a week. week. Try it all out and it'll give you that feeling. I'm going to have all that change and it's going to go into the vending machine <laughs> for chocolate bars and chips and coffee. Okay, we're going to have more information with Doug Spitowski right after this. Welcome back to the show. If you're just tuning in now, we are here at Roast Cafe, beautiful setting, to talk about cash while enjoying coffee. And once again, Doug Spitowski, my co-host from the Edmonton Financial Literacy Society. And Doug, we've been talking about credit cards. Now, let's say you are in a pickle, you have a lot of debt, and you're feeling really hopeless at the moment. What can people do to turn things around when they're in that kind of situation? Well, one of the first things they should do is talk to the people that they owe money to. Okay, and are you talking about the... the uh, it can who? be uh, the bank, it can mm -hmm. be the credit card company, or other people that you know, so that they are aware of your situation. Okay, and then, then what's the next step? Well, some of the things that they can do is they could give you a lower interest rate loan or a lower interest rate credit card. Okay, so you're, you're actually getting another credit card? Am I correct on that? No, uh, with a low interest rate credit card, the interest is around 8.5%, okay. which is about the same as a current personal loan, mm -hmm. but your credit card is uh, charged about 20%. Right, so this is a, a better credit card for a lot of reasons. Then when it comes to actually paying down that debt, which could seem astronomical for a lot of people, say you have 25 plus thousand dollars of debt, where do you go from there? <laughs> I know Yikes, that. that's a real tough one. If you owe a real lot of money, uh, perhaps you should get some professional help, okay. but it's important to try to uh, minimize that debt, to try to pay it off as soon as you can, and there's really no easy solution. You mm -hmm. can make more money, you can cut your expenses, but you have to pay. Right, so maybe making more money is the, the first step in the right direction, because if you already feel like you're maxed out, somehow you gotta make it up. You either have to make more money, cut your expenses, or a combination of both. Live in a box. No, don't live in a box. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we're going to continue this conversation, but right now it's time for Sports with Jordan Greenlee. Thanks, Jordan. Okay, after the break, we are going to have the five C's of credit with Doug Spitowski. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back, and we have promised you the five C's of credit. So, Doug, what are the five C's of credit? Well, when we want to borrow money, we are judged on the five C's of credit. The first one is character. Okay. In other words, if you borrow money or have you borrowed money, when you've borrowed money, do you pay it back? Okay, so character, very important. What's the next? second one is capacity. Do you actually make enough money to pay it back? Let's hope. <laughs> you don't want to lend to someone that you know won't be able to do so. The third one is a contribution, which is a fancy word for a down payment. And when you have a down payment, it shows that you have financial control. Okay, so if you're going to ask for $1,000, I at least want a down payment of two fifty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Next one is collateral. Okay. If you don't pay back, what are you going to give me? The shirt off your back. There you That's go. a fancy tie. I like that. Thank you very much. And the last one is, are there any conditions? Okay. Do you have a spouse that makes some money? Do you have many kids? Do you have health problems? Have you been in jail? Have you been in jail? No. <laughs> okay, so the five C's of credit. Thanks so much, Doug. We're going to wrap up in just a minute. But right now, cartoons aren't what they used to be, as one local entrepreneur demonstrates at Nate. Thanks, Bianca. Okay, Doug, so I just want to say a big thank you for being our special guest the last four weeks for Financial Literacy Month. Now, I'm sure our viewers at home would love more information about the courses that you hold. Where can they get that? EFLS.ca. Okay, I'm your host, Dana Giesbrecht, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, Doug. Cheers. Cheers. I got no more coffee. Come <laughs>